Zipping files. Why do you want to zip files? Well, zipping files can be useful if you want to save on disk space. Zipping files is useful if you want to put a bunch of files together to save as an archive. How do you use zip files on Linux? That's what we're going to discuss today. Let's get started. So zipping files in Linux. Let me open up a terminal here. And I have created a test directory here in my home directory. So I'm going to cd into this test directory. And in this test directory, I went ahead and copied a couple of plain text files over for practicing zipping and unzipping. So I copied over my bash rc file and my zsh rc file. And let's zip one of these files. Now if you only want to zip one file, then you don't have to use the zip command. The g zip command is useful when you want to zip just one file. It basically compresses a single file. So let's compress my bash rc. So gzip bash rc. And now if I do an ls, you will see I have bash rc.gz. So gzip, you can only use it on one file. And the other thing you need to know about gzip is it, it does this a zip, it does it in place, meaning you're not going to have a bash rc file after you run gzip on the bash rc file. You're going to have the, the compressed format, the bash rc.gz, but you will no longer have the original bash rc in that directory. So let me go ahead and unzip this. So since we did gzip, let's do g unzip. And then the name of the archive. Now I do an ls. And I'm back to having just bash rc and zshrc. The archive is no longer there. So that is gzip and gunzip. Again, that only works one file when you're compressing one file. Now the standard command for zipping, of course, is zip. And zip is useful when you're compressing more than one file, which most of the time, if you're creating an archive, you're archiving more than one file. So zip is the command, and then the name of the zip uh, package. So what do we want to name this? I'm going to name this mm, archive.zip. And then all the files we want to place in this. Remember, I have bash rc here, and I have zsh rc here in this directory. So I'm going to zip those two files into an archive called archive.zip. And there we go. And it gives me information. It tells me how much it deflated, how much disk space I'm saving by doing this, basically. If I do an ls. You will see my bash rc and my zsh rc are still here, the original files, so it doesn't do the zip in place, it doesn't replace them. You know, the original files are still here, but now I have an archive with the zipped uh, bash rc and zsh rc in that archive. And of course, how do you unzip them? Well, you unzip them with unzip rather than zip, and then name of archive. And then do we want to replace the bash rc and zshrc files that are going to be here? Um, it, it doesn't matter either way. Nothing has changed. But all right. And ls. And basically, I did unzip it. It put whatever was here, here, bash rc and zshrc. But because it also keeps the archive in place, it's kind of hard to tell that I did unzip. So let me do this. Let me remove bash rc and zshrc from this directory so I only have the archive and now let me run that unzip command again and now ls and you can see that it did unzip these files from that archive the archive's still there but now I have the unzipped version of bash rc and zshrc in that directory as well hope that made sense let's clear the screen now let me do an ls uh, I still have that zip file there archive.zip what if I wanted to create an encrypted zip file? Well, so I created archive.zip. To make it encrypted, the command you would want to use is zip cloak. Mm, not clode, zip cloak. <laughs> and then, of course, the name of the archive. Hit enter. Now it's going to ask you for a password. Give it a password. It's going to ask you to verify the password, which is nice in case you kind of stumble through the, the password, fat finger it or something, and you end up typing a password and <laughs> you have no idea what it is. It makes you verify it. All right, so now we have an encrypted archive.zip. And if you want a little further information about a particular zip file, 
you could run this command zip details name of archive and it's going to give you a massively long <laughs> list of information uh much of it i'm not sure you would find useful uh, probably a little bit too much information you would probably want to use uh, grip with that command if you had something specific you wanted to pick out of that you know you probably zip details archive and then you know grip you know something how about I don't know entries I see the word entries in here so you could do something like that so instead of getting that massive amount of information spit out. If you were looking for just one or two things, you know, you could use something like grip to, to get the information you're specifically looking for in the zip details command. And since I mentioned grip, the zip command has its own kind of grip command function called zip grip. And what this does is you do something like zip grip and then whatever string you're wanting to grip. So in my bash rc file. I'm sure there are many instances of the word alias. So let's grip or zip grip alias from my bash rc file within the archive.zip. So archive.zip and then bash rc. Let's see if that actually works. Ah, but we encrypted archive.zip. Remember we gave it a password. Now I have to enter a password. And there we go. The zip grip command does work. It gives me all the lines that included the word alias out of my bash rc file that is inside the encrypted archive.zip. Another useful command might be zip info. Zip info, name of archive. So archive.zip gives me the information, a very brief overview of that archive.zip file. So two entries and the names of the entries within the archive. Two files and it tells me about the compression, 53.7%. One interesting feature with creating these zip files is the ability to add comments to them. Now, this is not something I've uh, used in the past, but you do have this, uh, this command called zip note. You do zip note, name of archive, and then you need to write it to some file, some text file. So I'll call the file comments. If I do a quick ls, I now have a an empty file called comments that we're about to write the zip note to. So zip note archive.zip. And let's see. Need to give it the WF flag. And now we need to give it the lesser than sign comments. And that would write the comments inside the archive.zip. Now the comments file is empty because I haven't done anything to it, so let's vim comments. And this is how it looks out of the box. Z uh, zip note populates this file with this. It always gives you a name of file, and then in parentheses, comment above this line, the name of file, comment above this line, name of file, comment above this line, however many files you have in it. So if I follow what it's asking me here, and I comment above this line for bash rc, this is my bash rc escape and I don't know we could I guess do the same thing for the ZSHRC this is my ZSHRC and I'm gonna write and quit and okay so we did that command and now zip note space dash w archive dot zip space less than sign and then comments now let me run just zip note name of the zip file. Now you will see now we have comments bash rc. This is my bash rc zshrc. This is my zshrc. Is this very useful? I don't know. Like I said, I've never played with the zip note uh, command before. It's not something I've ever found a use for. Usually when you're archiving files to you're archiving hundreds or sometimes thousands of files, you're really going to go through and comment all of them? Probably not. This might be useful if you're just archiving a handful of files together. And for some reason, you need to come. Maybe the names are very similar. Maybe the file names are, are dates rather than anything descriptive, and you might want to you know, give a comment about them. I, I could see that being useful. And the final zip command I want to discuss is zip split. 
Now what zip split will do, it will split up an archive into multiple parts based on whatever size you give it. So if I do an ls, because I, I need to know the size of the files here. Uh, so the files are, let's see, my zsh file here is 4021 bytes here. So a good size for this would be zip split dash n and then size. So it needs to be at least 4021, uh, just to give it some breathing room, 4028. <laughs> right, and then name of archive. And it's going to split archive.zip up into however many archives it can based on this size here, 4028. And it creates two archives. So now I have archive1.zip, archive2.zip. So if I do a quick ls, you see now I have archive1 and archive2.zip. So it took this and basically divided it in, in, into two different zips. And let's check out the size. So if I do a quick, you can see, let's see, 4.2K for archive.zip and basically about 4.3K for the combined archive1 and archive2.zip. So slightly bigger than the original, but just ever so slightly. So that was a very brief overview of the zip command and various other zip related commands. Now zip is already installed on most Linux distros. If it's not just on a Debian or Ubuntu based system, sudo install zip, sudo apt install zip, pacman dash syu zip on arch based systems. But zip is already there. It's already at the command line. So you don't really need any GUI tools to zip and unzip files. Uh, if you really need some extra information on zip, of course, let me clear the screen here. You can man zip. And the man page for zip, I can tell you, is quite lengthy. Before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this show. Without them, this show would not be possible. The show is also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen, each and every one of them. They help support my work over on Patreon. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.